podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. The recent earthquake in Japan became a teachable moment in Charlotte classrooms. Here's a story about students who are learning more than the Japanese language. Part of the upcoming special, Learning with the World, from producer Donna Campbell, narrated by Bobby Dobbs. Japanese language classes have been available in North Carolina public schools for many years, mostly in high school. But younger children are now learning Japanese in elementary grades. Smith Academy in Charlotte offers six different foreign languages in kindergarten through eighth grade. Smith's Japanese language immersion program is growing every year. The program began as a magnet school option in Charlotte in 1992. We were very fortunate to have a community that values the international dimension of our community with many international businesses. North Carolina has important academic, business, and cultural ties with Japan, so the Department of Public Instruction has identified Japanese as a critical language. But these young students just think it's fun. I do a lot of body movement because they have no idea what I'm saying first, so I'll literally move my body like a sit down, stand up, look at me, and all those body motions and pictures, songs. Well, immersion is certainly a leap of faith for a parent who speaks only one language, and that's most of our parents. They can't imagine thinking in another language or dreaming in another language or telling jokes in another language. But we all learn to do those things in our first language at a very young age. In immersion, they go through the same process again in a second language, but they're using what they already know. So they learn that second language so much more rapidly. Their first language knowledge carries over to the second language knowledge as well. And if they know ABCs, they know how to learn the characters. So they can apply their knowledge how to learn the letters and sounds. Immediately, they start learning about Japanese alphabet as well. And they can make sentences, speak Japanese. So it is amazing. Yeah. High academic achievement and language fluency are two of the three strands that make up our curriculum. And the third one that is woven throughout is intercultural competence. Because language and culture are so inseparable, one doesn't think of that, but there is a cultural dimension to every language, and being able to confidently interact with those people in that culture has to include that dimension. Plus, that is so exciting for the children to participate in. It adds a dimension that can't be measured to their education. So children in the Japanese immersion program who are learning to play taiko drums have a dimension to their education that perhaps is not measured by the EOGs, but adds richness to their education now and to their life in the future. On March 11th, 2011, a massive earthquake struck Japan resulting in a devastating tsunami that affected the entire country. Radiation was released from damaged nuclear plants. At the time, third grade students at Smith were reading Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes, a non-fiction account of a young girl's experience with radiation after the atomic bomb at the end of World War II. Sadako believed a Japanese saying that if you can fold 1,000 paper cranes, you will get your wish. She died before she reached her goal, but friends and family helped to finish. Since March, students from all around the world have been making paper cranes for Japan as part of a campaign called Students Rebuild. Each crane sent to Japan was matched with a $2 donation from the Bezos Family Foundation. Smith Academy students created more than 2,000 cranes. They presented their gift to the General Consul of Japan and celebrated at a festival in May with parents and teachers. I believe we can change what we offer our children and what we expect of our children. They can do more and they can therefore be more in the future. 
they are what our communities and our state needs to be globally competitive in the next decade, in the rest of this century. And they are very capable of rising to high expectations and achieving things that are hard for us to imagine. The Learning with the World series is produced by UNC-TV in association with Learn NC and the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. Learning with the World is scheduled for broadcast on UNC-TV Thursday, June 16th at 9.30 p.m. And if you would like to know how to say a few words in Japanese, just visit learnnc.org. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV.